All right, so here's the schematic. Um, let me go ahead and explain what I did here. The battery connector is soldered on these two pins. So we're coming in with nine volts right here. Uh, here's the power switch. D1 is acting as a wrong polarity protection for the whole system. This board has two voltage rails, five volts and 3.3 volts. So I'm using two voltage regulators to produce these voltages. Uh, the first one is a 7805. Uh, and the second voltage regulator is a LM317 uh, which creates the 3.3 volts used by the display and I'm gonna talk about the display in one second uh, first let's take a look at the brain of the system this is the AVR that I'm using uh, we have a pull-up resistor on the reset pin we're clocking the AVR at 8 megahertz VCC and AVCC are tied together at 5 volts and decoupled through 100 nanofarad capacitors. The analog reference pin is tied to the ground through this 100 nanofarad capacitor and on the IO side of the AVR. Let's start with this pin here. So I'm using 180C pin um, analog to digital converter to monitor the battery voltage and we have this voltage divider here. Since these resistors have the same value uh, this voltage is exactly half the battery voltage basically we're dividing by two so when the battery is fully charged we're gonna have 4.5 volts here which is on the safe side it's less than 5 volts the RX and TX pins go to the UART connector uh, we have two push buttons or general purpose keys uh, key 1 which goes to port B1 and then key 2 goes to port D2 then we have the LCD pins, uh, so the LCD is driven in SPI mode and as I was telling you earlier it runs at 3.3 volts so that's why I'm using level translators here between the 5 volts on the AVR side and 3.3 volts and uh, then we have this pin here this pin connects to this segment which is perhaps the most important the most critical part of the whole schematic uh, this is a LM311 chip uh, in this configuration is acting as an oscillator and it outputs a frequency this frequency is going to change depending on the inductance or the capacitance which we want to measure so we're going to measure this frequency with the AVR basically after a reset we're going into the calibration mode and we measure this frequency uh, whenever we want to measure an inductance or a capacitance this relay here which acts like a double switch will connect our inductor in series to L1 and if we measure a capacitance uh, it will connect the capacitor in parallel to C12. This bipolar transistor here, this NPN transistor T1 is driving this relay and it's connected on the AVR port uh, B0. And then we have another relay, this is a read relay, uh, it's driven directly from the microcontroller uh, port B2 and it basically connects or disconnects this calibration capacitance which is pretty close to 1000 picofarads uh, this is a very small tolerance capacitor uh, I measured this before and we need this capacitance in the calibration procedure and here's where we're going to connect our components that we want to measure uh, the inductance or capacitance uh, what else we also have these two LEDs here to indicate the operation mode we're currently in so if we're doing a calibration or we measure a capacitance or inductance now let's go ahead and see how the PCB looks like as you can see all the components that I used on this board are through whole terminal packages uh, and I did this on purpose I wanted to make this uh, a project for beginners and uh, I think soldering through hole components is a great way to dive into electronics to get your feet wet and uh, you can get a good feeling for the parts and for the whole system uh, it's way easier to debug the board and it's a lot of fun too and you also don't need any expensive tools to solder this uh, now let me go ahead and hide some of these layers first uh, this is a double copper layer PCB and I'm going to show you the top layer of the board first with the sill screen on and uh, this is how it looks like here's where we're gonna connect the LCD uh, so the LCD sits on top of this board uh, here we have the UART connector in this corner uh, the microcontroller sits here uh, here's the LM311 chip 
voltage regulator here, the second voltage regulator, double relay right here, read relay here, and uh, here are the two push buttons uh, and the LEDs. The board is 80 millimeter by 49.5 millimeter, and uh, here's the bottom layer with its silk screen. Now let's talk a little bit about the software side of this project. Uh, I wrote the firmware for the microcontroller in Bascom. And let's start right here with the declaration section. Here's where I declare the microcontroller that I used. The Atmega 32.8p, crystal frequency 8 MHz. The baud rate for the UART, hardware stack, software stack, frame size. Here's a UART configuration. Uh, I still want to write a few lines of code to implement something like a debug mode. Uh, and maybe show not only the inductance or the capacitance which are measured but also some uh, intermediary steps maybe the frequencies or other values which I don't show on the display and uh, also write a PC application so I can connect to the LC meter via an UART to USB converter uh, the ADC config I'm using only one channel of the ADC to monitor the voltage of the battery I have three timers in this firmware uh, timer 1 is generating a 1 second time period uh, and I need that to measure the frequencies because as you know frequency means number of events per second. Timer 0 is used to count the pulses coming from the oscillator. 
and when timer 1 overflows the value stored in the variable which is incrementing by timer 0 uh, that's going to be the frequency and I also use timer 2 I wanted to have a 4 seconds delay before I recheck the battery status um, here's the LCD configuration and here's where I declare the LEDs the keys and here are my relays relay 2 uh, which connects the calibration capacitor and relay 1 which switches between capacitance mode and inductance mode. The variables are declared here. I'm using a lot of float variables because I'm dealing with a lot of decimals and uh, large numbers. And here's where I declared my subroutines. So this firmware is based on this five subroutines. There's not a lot going on in the main loop. Everything is in the subs here. Uh, reading the battery voltage, doing the calibration sequence, measuring the components and then converting the values into engineering units. And we begin by initializing the display, show a splash screen, and then we jump right to the calibration sequence. Um, and then we have the main loop. We're just waiting for this flag to be raised here. Uh, this happens every four seconds. And when it is raised, when this bit is one, uh, we call this subroutine, which measures the battery voltage and then shows the level on the display and we also want to monitor any key presses if one of the keys pressed we change between capacitance and inductance mode and if both keys are pressed we're going to redo the calibration timers interrupts routines are here timer one is counting backwards from this value to zero and here's something i forgot to tell you uh, which is very important uh, to find this value here i'm using a precision resonator on the pin which is counting the frequencies this resonator outputs a frequency very close to 4 MHz. I probed this on the oscilloscope and it's something like uh, 3999994 Hz. And I'm tweaking this value in software till the value of the frequency that I'm reading is close to 4 million Hz. And that's how I know that timer 1 gives me a 1 second interrupt. If this value would be higher, it would take longer to count to 0. And that would be more than 1 second. And the same thing would happen if it's smaller. Uh, it takes less than one second. So all the frequencies which we're going to measure are based on this one second timer here. That's why this is the most critical part of the whole system. Timer 0 just counts the pulses coming from the oscillator and timer 2 uh, raises a flag after 4 seconds. So it overflows every 10 milliseconds multiplied with 400 4000 milliseconds. And when this happens we detect this in the main loop and we call this subroutine which takes the battery voltage transforms it into a level and then I show a graphical item on the display uh, there are four uh, different symbols 100% 75 50 and low battery voltage basically it will blink when this happens uh, the calibration routine we're instructing the user to remove any component from the measuring terminals and then we count the frequency um, the calibration and measuring subroutines are following the steps that uh, that I showed in the algorithm So I'm not going to get into detail again here The last thing that happens before displaying a value on the LCD uh, We want to transform the value so if it's something like let's say 12,000 picofarads I'm going to show 12 nanofarads because it's easier to read The code is full of comments and uh, I think it's pretty easy to understand what each line is doing uh, if you want to modify this or port it to other languages, just feel free to do so.